Hi, and welcome to another installment of Star Citizen. Today, I'm going to be talking about ship selection. I'm going to be talking about how to select the right ship for you. Now, this is going to go beyond just starter ships or how to select the right fighter ship. This is potentially about any ship. I'm going to equip you with a little bit of a technique and a tool to go about doing that. There's a lot of ships in Star Citizen to choose from, and before 3.0 came out, there was quite a few even back then, and you had to look and research to try to select the right ship that was going to suit your needs. But now in 3.8, a couple years later, there are so many ships on the market, it can be almost a little overwhelming to know, well, what's the best ship for me? Now, whether you're trying to select a starter ship or maybe you've bought a starter ship and you're thinking about upgrading to a better ship. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. Well, there are a lot of choices out there. Rather than going over any specific ship kind of review, I'm actually going to give you some information about how to select that ship and give you a little bit of a tool. What I'm showing you here is a table that comes from the industry. It's part of what's called decision and analysis resolution. And this is how it works. Down this first column, you're going to put your criteria that you want to evaluate for each ship. You can see the criteria that I have listed out here. I have things like its ability to move cargo, how well it is at combat for offense, combat for defense. Now these are all categories that you can make up yourself. For instance, I almost had combat, offense, and defense together as just its ability to perform in combat, but I decided that might not be fair. A lot of ships are different. For instance, the Buccaneer is very good offensively, but is kind of built out of paper, they say. And something like the Terrapin, particularly once they get armor values in place, its claim to fame is supposed to be like this hard-shelled turtle. It's supposed to be able to take a bit of a pounding even though it can't dish out hardly anything. So for me, that's why I broke it down that way, although you could break it down any way that you want. If you're really into combat and you're trying to evaluate a combat ship, then maybe the fact that it has different size gimbals or the ability to have gimbaled weapons or fixed weapons, whatever the case might happen to be, you could break that down. And that's the important part about this list. This isn't a definitive list of all the features. These are the features that you want to evaluate in whatever ship that you're interested in. So I go through here for conveniences. I lump things into there as well. Conveniences were things like, does it have a bed to log out in? Which is a big deal for me. Also having a bathroom or a kitchen. When hygiene comes into your character a little bit, that might be important as well. Multi-crew roles. If you're solely focused on single, or whether you want to have buddies with you. I wanted to evaluate the internal space. Does it have a place to walk around in? Or is it just a cockpit that you get into and that's it? There's actually no internal space to walk around in. And then of course the actual just appeal of the ship. How does it look on the outside? Is it cool? Is it sleek? Does it appeal to me? The internal feel was also something. It included, I suppose, the ability to be able to see out of the ship and all that. But let's face it, you spend a lot of your time in your pilot seat, actually inside of your ship. So how it feels to you in there might be really important to you. And then of course, there's the price value. Now when you're setting up your criteria, for this to really work correctly, you've always got to be thinking in the positive. For instance, I could have put just price here and not price value. Another example here might be struts. If having lots of struts in your view is a big deal to you, then if you were to put that down, ship struts, well, something like the Aurora that has lots of them might get a four, and the Prospector, which has none, might get a one. But that would be the opposite of what you really want. You always want the higher number to be the one that best satisfies your criteria, your wants, your needs, and should include not just those things that are necessarily important to you, but maybe any characteristics at all that you want to evaluate. That way, as you go through and put down your numbers, I'm going to use a simple scale of one to five. I'll be weighting each one of these characteristics about how important they are to me. Now that's completely different than how well the ship is capable of actually executing that particular characteristic. That's in the next column. 
each one of these other columns represents each ship that you want to evaluate. And you're going to go through a similar exercise you did before, but this time you're going to keep in mind how well does that ship satisfy the criteria that I put down. Now for the most part, a lot of this criteria will not be as subjective as just the importance to you. Things like the amount of cargo space or the price, some things that are actually very fixed. Even its combat offensive capability, that'll be based on the number of weapons and the sizes of weapons and gimbals and things like that. So a lot of this criteria is a little more factual based on the ship itself. This isn't necessarily true with all the criteria. Things like the external appeal are still a subjective choice by you. But even there, you can see there's a difference between how attractive the ship is to you versus how important just having an attractive ship is. Those are two different types of things. So you're ranking them independently from what's important to you versus how well it satisfies that criteria. Now I went through this exercise and ranked two different ships. What was really interesting to me is that I was ranking two ships that were very similar to each other, just in terms of their overall function. They were both capable of carrying some light freight, could do a little bit of light fighting. They were the exact same price point on the RSI website, but as you can see, how they satisfied each one of my criteria was actually quite different across many of the categories. And to be honest, I really wasn't sure which ship was going to satisfy my needs the best. What you do to get a final score is now fairly obvious. You multiply the ship's ability to perform the characteristic by how important that characteristic is to you. You take all of those numbers and add them up and you get a final score for that particular ship. Both these ships did wind up coming fairly close in terms of number. But it was revealing to me where I was putting my importance in terms of the ship. And it made me look a little bit more careful in terms of the actual ship's capabilities and what it provided. It's very easy to get lost in the sauce amongst all the statistics and different characteristics of each ship when you're trying to look across two, three, four, five different ships that potentially might satisfy your needs. Lastly, the thing that you need to be aware of to make all of this work is having good information. It's very important for you to do your research about the different ships. It would be impossible for me to go over all the different aspects about all the different ships, even for a specific role, like cargo running or fighting, something like that. So first, I'm going to talk about an area for you to get some base information, but a place to be cautious and that's the RSI website itself. Now, without being too critical about RSI and their website, I do have to say, it is out of date, and a lot of the information there is not accurate. The ships that are currently flyable and the prices of those ships are, but a lot of the statistics about those ships have not been updated in a very long time. And you need to be cautious about that. Take, for example, one of my favorite ships, and actually the ship that I started playing the game with, the Cutlass Black. Almost all the pictures they have on the website are of the Cutlass over two years ago before they made a significant update to the ship. In this picture right here, it looks a little similar to this. It's got the two big engines off the back and a turret on top and a little vertical side wings. But beyond that, there's been a lot of changes to this ship. It doesn't have the two front landing legs. It has one kind of talon-like claw out in front. Anybody that's been on board a Cutlass will recognize that the interior also looks nothing like this in the cargo bay. It doesn't have those two beds in the back. There's actually even a little toilet back behind the bed that's on the left. And that turret, it doesn't drop down into the cargo bay anymore. It's over in a little front compartment in the ship. Did you say over? So the interior layout is even very different from what it used to be. Nothing is over until we decide it is! But these are the pictures that they have on the RSI website. Forget it, he's rolling. If we look at even some of the statistics of this, it shows, for instance, in the weapons. It's got four Badger laser repeaters, as well as a couple of size 3 repeaters as the turrets. The default loadout for this ship is not four Badger laser repeaters. It's actually two of them and the other two guns that it has are ballistics. 
There's even problems with the crew. Now, I've seen this in a lot of the other ships. It says here, a minimum crew, two persons, max crew, two persons. So a new person coming in here that isn't really familiar with the ships themselves might think, oh, well, I shouldn't buy this ship because I'm planning on playing solo, and it says it requires a minimum crew of two. But that's not true at all. You can easily solo this ship. It doesn't require a minimum crew of two people at all. And as far as maximum crew, there's really three operable seats in the ship. There's the pilot seat, the turret gunner, and there is a co-pilot seat, which does have some room and ability now, but we hope that the co-pilot So what should a player do? Whether a new player really not familiar with the ships at all, or an existing player that really is wanting to know the accurate information about some of these ships that are coming out. My advice is to actually use the community itself. There are people on YouTube that have done some really great ship reviews. So I would go out there and take a look at those ships and make sure that you pick ones that are relatively recent. Because CIG has done upgrade passes on a lot of these ships, looking at a ship review that was even from a year ago could be very out of date. That way, you'll be getting the best information to be able to make a decision. So in the end, I really like this exercise. I like this thing. I was able to put down all my criteria and really assess what I was weighing as the most important. That's what makes this particular tool good for you. You can customize the features to the ones that are important for you for the kind of ship you're looking at. Then you get to weight and rank everything. So this isn't some predetermined decision or assessment from another person. This is you making your own assessment. If you're more analytical or logically minded, you might like this. Step by step, I've made the correct and logical decisions. Now you might be a person that says, hey, I just want that ship. There's nothing wrong with that. Just selecting it. What about that blue one? We'll take that one. And in fact, some ships are just so niched right now, there might only be one choice. Take the Vulture for salvage. It's either that or the Reclaimer. So your decisioning there is pretty limited. It depends whether you want a big multi-crew ship or a single ship. So there's not a whole lot to consider. But along these other areas, starter ships, multi-role, freighters, fighters, there's a lot to consider. So take this technique and try it out. If you have an existing fleet, you might even be interested to see how your own ships pan out in this objective, yet personally weighted kind of evaluation. To celebrate having a thousand subscribers, this month I'm giving away a C8X Pisces with lifetime insurance and a game package. So if you've been wanting to get into Star Citizen, this is a good giveaway for you. It's been donated courtesy of player Algi and in the name of the Reed organization. Reed focuses on science, logistics, and engineering, which includes the trading and mining we have right now, future salvage, exploration, and the science mechanics, that sort of thing when it comes into play. It's a laid back organization that also has a focus on collaboration and has a defense division to keep those logistics of trading and mining and so on safe. If you would like to enter, just type the keyword Pisces into one of the comments below for the month of January. If you got anything out of this, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be talking to you later.